The tool has two modes, image mode where you draw the character and geometry and animation mode where you animate the character. Um, you can get to these modes from the menu or through using these buttons on the left. Let's talk about drawing mode. When you're drawing the character, the first curve you draw needs to be a closed shape. Any curve that you draw after that needs to overlap one of the things that you've drawn before. And the software will figure out which parts overlap each other and will connect them appropriately when you switch into 3D mode. If you want a limb to be symmetrical on both sides of the body, what you do is hold down the control key and click on the leg. And it will highlight it and turn red. And then when you go into 3D mode, you'll see that there are now two legs on both sides of the body. If you don't want to draw your character freehand, you can also import a template image from the file menu here. And then you can use that as a guide for the drawing of your character. There's no limit to how many layers of shapes you can add on top of each other. Don't feel like you have to be limited by a simple body plan. The software should be able to handle almost anything that you throw at it. Let's talk about geometry and animation mode. On the left, we've got a side view of the character. And on the right, we have what looks like another side view of the character. But using the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can rotate that view around and see the character from different angles. To move the character around is as simple as grabbing part of it with the mouse and moving it around. But to animate the character, you need to create a control point. And you do that by holding down the control key and clicking. To pose the character, you can create multiple control points and move them around. To animate the character, simply move the control points around. To record your animation, you start recording by hitting the letter E on the keyboard. And you stop by hitting it again. To play back the animation, hit the space bar. Note that the first control point that you animate turns green. This control point is going to set the pace of animation for all the rest of the control points to follow. So if you start animating a second control point, the timing will be stretched or squeezed to fit the same amount of time as the first control point you animated. To adjust the timing of a control point's animation, you can use the plus and minus keys to shift time forward or backward. So for example, if I wanted to turn this walk into a skip, I could do it like that. You can also adjust the overall position of an animation cycle, and you can adjust its scale by hitting the S key. Or you can adjust the scale independently in X or Y using the X key or the Y key. So once you have animation that you like, there are a few options for how to render it. If you look at the view menu, you'll see some of those options. And if you remember that texture that we loaded up at the beginning of this session, you can display that texture on your character using this option. And it will be projected from the side onto the character's body. You can choose to have shading in addition to the texture, or you can have that shading turned off. Another option is to use StyleBlit, which is a non-photorealistic rendering stylization, which uses an example texture and covers the entire surface of the character with that texture. And if you use the plus and minus keys, you can cycle through a few different options that are pre-selected. And in future versions of this tool, we will open up the ability for you to add your own different styles. Once you're happy with your masterpiece and you're ready to save it, you can go to the file menu and select Save As. Uh, one thing to note is that you will need to create a directory for your files because Monster Mash is going to save a collection of separate files. You can also export your animation in 3D in the form of OBJ files 
and also as screenshots.